Hi everyone, welcome to Miss Adams Teaches English Language. This video is going to focus on the Cambridge IGCSE paper uh, for English as a First Language, but we're going to focus in on paper one, question three. That's the recreative task where you're asked to write using the material of text C, but in a different format. I'm going to be using the March 2020 paper um, on um, Adam K. This is going to hurt. Uh, this is the last one of a series of videos that looks that's looked at the whole paper. So do go back and have a little look at my guidance for questions one and question two as well. Without further ado, let's get started. OK, so this is the same text that you would have answered uh, your question two responses. So um, actually, you should be feeling quite confident with the content already because you've done that long question on the two paragraphs and some information retrieval. Um, so hopefully you'll only need to maybe read this through again, um, maybe one more time whilst preparing and making your notes. So let's have a little look at the question. Um, so reread text C, this is going to hurt, and then answer question three. Imagine you are Adam, after reading your diaries, you write a letter to your parents reflecting on your time in medicine and your decision to quit. OK, so the first thing I'm going to draw your attention to on the slide, I've done this little gap box. Gap stands for genre, audience and purpose. So genre like the type of the text, like the mode of the text. So uh, here, you know, you're going to get one of six different text types. So it could be a letter, it could be an article, it could be a speech, it could be a diary, it could be a report. Um, and actually do check out another video that I've got coming your way where I'm going to break down the features of each of these texts. Sorry, interview, that's the other one. Um, yeah, so I'll break down the features, what to expect. So you figure out, well, what's the genre? So what's the text type? And therefore, what conventions am I going to use? Um, who is the audience? Because that is going to uh, give an indication on the kind of tone and the formality, the register that you're going to use. And what is the purpose? So why am I writing it? So the gap is given to you in that early opening section. So we're writing a letter to our parents reflecting on your time in medicine. So it's a writing to inform. It's a letter, but because it's to your parents as the audience, it's going to be more informal. It's not going to be a formal letter as if you were writing to your head teacher. That would be a very different kind of letter. The next thing the question does is it gives you your three bullet points. So in this case, it tells us that in the letter, you should cover why you went to medical school and what the training was like, what the challenges were, um, being on the wards as a junior doctor and how you felt about it, then why you felt you had to give up and your feelings as you look back. Now, this is such a gift from the exam board because one, it's giving you very, very clearly the information that you need to retrieve, but it's also offering you a structure. Now, you don't have to stick to it as a structure, i.e. three paragraphs covering, because sometimes, depending on the text type, it might not work. But in this case, with the letter, actually, it works quite nicely. And you'll notice that when you're finding your... Um, your material that it's relatively chronological so this question in particular is lovely then we have write the words of the letter so that's the base task base your letter on what you have read in text c but be careful to use your own words okay so again we're using that skill we're going to be redressing the words we can have a little bit of flexibility here in terms of how you add detail but you've got to make sure that you're covering the points in those bullet points so lots of lovely synonyms to help you out here okay and then we are focusing on 250 to 350 words okay now you'll notice 15 marks are for the content so 15 marks are for how many of these bad boys you get in but you've also got 10 marks for the quality of your writing so you do need to be accurate okay so let's talk about the process the first thing that I would do is I would get my highlights. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole text. OK, I'm just going to show the opening. So I also think that it's a good idea to code your highlighting. So you might use three different color pens or you might go, um, you might put an underline and then one, two and three or A, B and C uh, to indicate which bullet point you are coding. You might use, a, I don't know, a squiggly line and a straight line and a 
circle, well, however you want to do it, but make sure that on that read through, you are finding the information that you're going to need. So for this one, this was bullet point one, which was why you wanted to be a doctor, why Adam wanted to be a doctor and what training was like. So straight away, I've picked up this bit because it, the indication is that he is only a doctor because his dad was. So I know that I'm going to have to get that into my letter. We've got about training was hard because of all of the learning you had to take. This is another indication of why you wanted to be a doctor, that kind of sense of buzz get to change your name like a superhero um and then it came as a blow to discover i spent a quarter of my life at medical school and wasn't remotely prepared so those are some things i'm going to put in to my um response now once you have annotated the whole text and you've found your information the next thing to do is to organize it some people just immediately start writing i don't think that's a good idea i think there's enough time in to really properly build up a plan and this is what i would suggest a simple table uh, sometimes i like doing it in triangles you know like uh, almost like a pie chart or you know just a list doesn't really matter how you do it but do actually jot down just in real short notes all of that information because then what you can do rather than like trailing through your highlights and trying to work out what goes together you can quite happily decide on your order and how you're going to put it in and then what you can do is as you're writing it into your letter or whatever text type it is you can tick it off OK, and then you know that you're covering what you need to know. OK, so the, these are just all of the things that I picked out from the extract that I thought would be um, helpful. And I am going to use it to structure my letter in this particular situation. OK, so now we obviously get to the bit where we need to transform our writing. Yeah, we need to take it from the uh, bullet points into continuous text. Uh, written for genre audience and purpose. So I wanted to show you this because this is kind of similar to a number of the exemplars I saw. Um, even some of the good exemplars made this mistake. So dear mum and dad, well that's fine because that's your audience and that's a convention of a letter, dear mum and dad. I am writing this letter to you, to, uh, writing this letter, sorry, to tell you about why I quit medical school. I will explain why I began training, what the job on the ward was like, and how I feel about it now, looking back. Can you ever imagine writing that formally to your to your folks, to your mum and dad? You'd be like, hi mum, how's it going? So you've got to make a judgment based on who the audience is as to how you're going to address them. Now, if you were writing a letter to the local council, if you were writing a letter to um, your head teacher, if you were writing a letter to a newspaper to respond to something that you had read. Yes, you would be much more formal. I am writing this letter to inform you of my grave concerns about the state of education or whatever it might be. And you might set out what points you're going to cover in the letter as a way of structuring it, but not to your mum or dad or Auntie Sue. Um, OK, so on the next slide, I've got a full response, OK, that I think covers a lot of the bases and uh, has the right register. So I will read it out loud to you, but obviously skip me, just take a picture and, and read it in your own time if, if you don't want, but here it is. A bit more like it. Dear Mum and Dad, how are you both? I know I haven't written in a while and I bet you have a hundred questions about what happened at work and why I left. So immediately I'm engaging with the purpose, yeah? I'm, I'm creating a way for this letter to feel natural like oh god i didn't really want to talk to you about it but now i'm now here i am yeah becoming a doctor seemed like an automatic response i guess i wanted to make you proud dad following your footsteps perhaps that's why i haven't told you much about it but having read through my old diaries recently i realized it was time so i'm getting in part of the content you know also mentioned the fact that they, there are the diaries but i'm getting in the stuff about following in dad's footsteps but i'm also giving a kind of reason for this letter right now i'm going to get into the next two bullet points are in here okay training was tough there was so much to learn so that's still in bullet point one and even with all the studying i still didn't have a clue what i was getting myself in for covering the bit about being unprepared i was caught up in the excitement of it i was going to save lives like superman i suppose superhero bit but when I finally got to the ward, I was totally out of my depth. 
the night shifts were horrendous. So now do you see how I've seamlessly moved into the second bullet point? The night shifts were horrendous and there were so many. I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. Sometimes I was completely alone, totally responsible for the lives of my patients. It was utterly traumatising. Not all the time, though. Did I ever tell you about the patient with itchy teeth? Lol. And the admin. I'd be so exhausted from the shift and then I would have hundreds of tasks to complete. Paperwork, phone calls, you name it. It's strange because elements of the job were incredible, but some were boring. Following people around wards, watching them make all the decisions whilst you just stand and nod your head. Eventually it became too much. I couldn't relax in my own time. It really took a toll on my personal life. I decided I had to put myself first. Lots of people don't understand. The public don't know what's going on behind the emergency doors. I'm even thinking about publishing my diaries to shed some light on what it's really like. Anyway, that about sums it up. I hope you both understand and still feel proud of me. Lots of love, Adam. Okay, so I've signed off in the conventional way for a letter. And again, I kind of loop it back. But so what I've done here is obviously this is the third bullet point, bullet point down here. And like I said, Bullet points one and two are both dealt with there, bullet point one up there. I'm covering a lot of material, but I'm putting it in my own words and I'm using a style that is appropriate for the genre, the audience and the purpose. OK, top tips. About 35 minutes on this section again, including any read through, you know, that you need to do again. So, yeah, 35 minutes. Um, that's still if you follow my um, my guidance on minutes from the other videos that still gives you 10 minutes okay highlight the extract first maybe coding it uh, then organize your notes so you can plan your paragraphs okay i really think that's worth doing make sure you've assessed the gap the genre the audience and the purpose so that you know that you're writing in the right style think about the features of the form you know obviously that was a letter, so you had a salutation like dear mum and dad. If it was a formal letter, you might write to whom it may concern, and then you'd appropriate like sign off yours faithfully, etc. Um, if it's an article, you know, think about having a headline and a byline, etc. Um, as you're going through, do tick off all of the info in your um, note structure so that you kind of are double checking that you're hitting everything. And super important, please, 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 please review your work as you go. Don't wait until the end. So do paragraph by paragraph because you've got 10 marks here for the quality of your writing. So you need to be on the lookout for silly mistakes. You'll know yourself what silly mistakes you make, whether it's capital letters, missing up full stops, whether it's comma splicing. If you check each paragraph rather than everything at the end you're more likely to pick up on your mistakes because your brain won't be so tired and you'll be less likely to make the same mistakes again because you'll be more conscious and aware if you want any help with things like punctuation like comma splicing etc etc um there is a playlist uh called spelling punctuation and grammar on my channel so do have a little look at that oh and very important if you have your note structure cross it out yeah don't let your examiner become baffled as to what they should be marking so cross out any planning okay that is it from me thank you uh, again for watching do keep your eyes peeled for another video that will be coming out on question three that is going to go through every text type and some basic features just so you can kind of hit that conventions of the form uh, any questions or comments just give me a shout and i will come back to you thanks again Happy revising.